All right, I see on the live chat, you're asking, where are the High Kings? Well, they're right here. <laughs> they're right here the whole time. So, Finbar Clancy, Brian Dumphy, Martin Fury, and Darren Holden. Thank you. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for waiting. And we've been promoting this throughout the show. So, uh, three-time winning best folk group. And now you're taking your performances to the US, the U.S. So, tell me where you're going and what's on this folk tour. Yeah, we've, well, we've so far we've had an, an amazing time. We've been here for two weeks already. Um, we've brought in about 12 shows so far. Mm -hmm. 12 shows. And it's just absolutely been fantastic. We've gone from started off in Chicago ended up in Albany last night which was an incredible show for us and uh, the audiences are just growing and growing every time we do another gig it's just been fantastic and um, the songs have been around for decades and people just want to hear these songs again and the younger generation are loving the songs as well so so we love to see it see that you know and they're all coming to see us it's brilliant great and you all have such interesting and amazing backgrounds in this business so can you tell me about those and then how you decided to bring them all together to form the High Kings? Well, uh, most recently for myself, I was um, here in New York on Broadway for about three and a half years playing Billy Joel in uh, Moving Out. And um, I performed that all over the United States and Japan and Canada. And uh, at the time that I joined the High Kings, I was actually looking for an outlet to perform Irish music. And uh, I couldn't you know, have come across um, a more perfect one, really. And to get to perform with these three guys every night is just an amazing feeling. And we Go really on, feel, yeah. no, you know, <laughs> they paid me well earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an amazing feeling to think that we're taking a new generation of um, fans along on this journey with us. You know, as Brian said, these are songs that have been around for many, many years. And uh, we've been shown since we got to the United States that people really want the High Kings to be here. Um, currently, our album is sitting on top of the iTunes download chart. Um, we're looking like we're going to have a top five uh, world music chart placing on Billboard this week. So Great. fingers crossed for all of that. Yeah. And now it's also in the family. It's family business, though, for yeah. some of you as well. So tell me about that. Go ahead. Well, um, I'm a Clancy. Um, Martin's a Fury. Brian's a Dunphy and Darren's a Holden. <laughs> yeah, and um, the Clancy brothers would be, my uncles and my dad was also in the Clancy brothers, and uh, Martin's family were furious. Speak for yourself, you're grand. Um, <laughs> they played, actually we were down earlier on today, we were um, walking around and we saw Carnegie Hall, and I was just thinking it's actually 50 years this year that they first played Carnegie Hall. So it's a, wow. it's a big thrill, it's a big yeah. thrill to be back, and we we're hoping, fingers crossed, that we'll get to play there maybe hopefully next year. Absolutely, and things. with your, we were talking about your album that you mentioned, mm -hmm. now it's your sophomore album, right? Yeah. Uh, Memory Lane. So what did you learn from your first album and I guess the international recognition that it got and how did that help you for part two? Um, learned, um, well, never worked in any kind of musical theatre before or anything like that. I always just playing music in clubs, uh, writing music, recording music from my point of view. So working with the two guys who worked in Riverdance and moving out, um, the, the discipline kind of the aspect of discipline was different. You know, you had to kind of turn up on time. Everything was much, much stricter. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, it was a great, you know, really large learning curve from my point of view, like I said, because it was always just sort of self-promoted kind of stuff, which I did before. Um, so, and to work with David Downs, the producer of the first album, who produced Celtic Woman, um, you know, they've had numerous number ones. You know, knowing that you were working with somebody who had had massive success and being just all ears for that, mm -hmm. it was really, really yeah. important, I think. Yeah. I think the experience for the four of us, just to say that we've all had four very diverse backgrounds, and to bring that into the High Kings, I mean, the very first time we got together and sang a couple of songs, we couldn't actually believe ourselves how the voices would blend so well together, because, as, as I said, four very different voices, four very different backgrounds, and it just remarkably came well together, and, and, and the audience are really hearing that in every song we do, which is great. Well, that album got to number one as well in, in Billboard, uh, which was really good uh, on the whatever charts yeah. it was, yeah. so... Yeah, so and I now I want to talk about what a show includes because, and I guess what in, what it's on what's on the album as well. Thirteen yeah. instruments, lots of instruments, lots yeah. going on. Yeah. So they get a ticket to a High King show. What do they get? They get two two hours plus of just uh, an amazing like roller coaster ride of everything that is great about Irish ballad music and folk music. It's like a Celtic folklore <laughs> lesson for two hours, and uh, we're all about having fun. That's the most important element of a High Kings concert, and we come along to see us 
you know, you don't just get your ticket and come along and sit. You're part of the show, and that's mm -hmm. the, the thing we keep telling people. Come along, don't be afraid to sing. But uh, one of the things we're finding on this tour is little kids are starting to come out to see us. Like last night, we played in Albany, mm -hmm. and there was a baby there. Um, couldn't it be more than 10 months old? And then there was three-year-olds, five-year-olds, seven-year-olds, and they come along, and we have this term in the High Kings, it's uh, folk and roll. It's not rock mm -hmm. and roll, it's folk and roll. And all these kids are there with their T-shirts saying folk and roll, and there's a little bit of a yeah. silent movement going on yeah, right now. Yeah. So we're hoping that in about six to 12 months' time that we're going to be walking down Fifth Avenue and seeing all these little kids with ah, yeah. folk and roll, you know? Great. Is that, is that a lot? Because a lot of it is in, steeped in tradition, and these songs, like you were saying, they're familiar songs, they've been around mm -hmm. for a long time, and now people, I guess, are bringing their kids to yep. so they can yeah. learn them mm -hmm. right away. Yeah, <laughs> Martin's been giving out whistles. <laughs> oh, to well, the kids. Yeah, we give it a few whistles as well. Well, it's just it's just you know we had to learn them when we were kids because mm -hmm. they were everywhere. And it's I mean to be honest, I think everybody thought they'd gone by the wayside. A lot of the old Irish songs, you know, you hear them in the bars and the occasional kind of TV series, but not so much you know every day in everyday life. Mm -hmm. But now in Ireland, everywhere you go on the on the folk sessions, you know, in bars everywhere, people are playing ballads again. Yeah. They it's certainly are. The one thing that we notice from people coming to the show is telling us that they're bringing their kids to school in the car and they, the kids want to hear the High Kings. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they want to hear all the latest pop right. music, but they also want to hear the High Kings. So it's Which like a modern and a traditional side. That's yeah. great. It, you know. And by the way, the live chat, I think they like that folk and roll. Because <laughs> they put like a thousand uh, exclamation points, so good job. Exactly. Right. And now let me also ask you, I was told there were some sweaters. Is there a certain sweater you use? Oh, or, or that's the, the tradition? Oh, that's what is that? Years, yeah. Well, I was there's a funny story told. behind that. Oh, what good. happened was, um, this is going back to the Clancy Brothers 50 years ago, you know, when they, when they arrived in New York, someone um, sent over sweaters for them to wear for the, for the New York Code, and their manager at the time saw the sweaters, and everybody had a, a gimmick or something, or a, a uniform or something, and when they saw the sweaters, said, that's, that's the look, you know, of it, but no, we just, we wear black shirts. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> Too better. Long. All right, and now just one more time before I let you go and get set up for the performance, and we're very excited about it here, and the live chatters, and I uh, wanted to just ask you in terms of how busy you are this week, yep. and again, where you're going this week. Well, we have a couple of radio interviews tomorrow. Um, WFUV, we're on tomorrow, and Sirius Radio. Sirius Radio, radio yeah. Um, NPR on uh, Wednesday. NPR, um, can we mention? Yeah, yeah I'm totally free. Yeah. I don't mind. What are you, what's happening? St. Patrick's Day. What are we doing, boys? Well, we're doing a, a very, very big morning TV show with a very hot chick and uh, an elderly <laughs> man. We're not allowed to say what it is, but I think listeners can Got uh, it. Yeah, Got yeah, it. Yeah, what it is. We're playing Sullivan Hall here Sullivan. in New York on yeah. the 16th at 9 o'clock. <laughs> uh, we're in Boston at the Paradise Rock Club on the 17th at 8 o'clock. Yeah. We're all over the United States until um, March 31st. Mm -hmm. We finish off in Atlanta and then we're back home to promote a brand new album in Ireland. Right. Exactly. And then the album. Yeah. Memory Lane. So, thank you guys so much. Um, we'll let you get set up for the performance and we'll show a quick clip from one of your shows. Right? Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank, you. Yes. thank you. One more word, signal token, whistle out the marching chain. When you fight upon the shoulder, by the rising of the moon, by the rising of the moon.